because you've been in government, not in the Secret Service, in the in the in the Commerce Department, but we've got to bring up, we've got to bring up JFK. <laughs> Neil watched it a few weeks ago. I watched it last night again. Who killed JFK, Don? That's a great question. <laughs> and look out for my new book. <laughs> All right, so so I have to admit, I am uh, I am not so much a connoisseur of conspiracy theories yeah. as um, I enjoy the 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 mental hoops that many people have yeah. to jump through to believe yep. conspiracy theories and the jfk one it's, there's just so many theories out mm. there and and unfortunately what what is being presented by you know the, by the, like the warren report as the truth is just as wacky as all of the conspiracy <laughs> theories so i yeah. don't think we'll ever actually know but i i have to admit of of the conspiracy theories uh, out there, the one that I like the most uh, because it's so simple and it's it's Occam's razor um, mm. is that the Secret Service guy in the follow car who had not properly qualified with the brand new M16 rifle that was laying on the floor of the car um, accidentally placed his finger in the trigger guard which what? is a no-no for any of you what? firearms types wow and accidentally lets a round off wow uh, because I if you know you were going there i had not heard that one uh, because if you draw one. a line from where the follow car was it almost matches what would have been the magic bullet oh my god wow. so there was a book called mortal error by uh bonner menninger huh. that uh explores this theory i will Full disclosure, say that it has allegedly been debunked yeah. by other journalists, much like every other Ever, yeah, theory, you know, but I, I like wow. it better than a magic bullet. <laughs> that's for sure. But what about the second, the third, the fourth shooters? Yeah. Well, they, I mean, all those, here, you know. All so, those and, and there's the interesting thing. So um, uh, Taurus Trade Advisor is actually based in Dallas, um, hmm. and I run the Washington, D.C. office. Yeah. Well, it's me. I'm just <laughs> – <office. But laughs> I run the, we the know Washington, D.C. office. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> when, I, when I went to visit the home office for the first time, I made sure I carved out some time to get to Dealey Plaza yeah. and go mm -hmm. to the JFK Museum there, sure. which is in the – the former book depository building okay and you can stand in the wind you know next to the windows that are next to where his uh shooters perch were and allegedly yeah uh, allegedly <laughs> well and you can you can actually get a good bead for how this probably went down mm. um and i i will be the first to admit there's no doubt in my mind that um uh, uh he was planning to kill the president that day whether he was Oswald, doing, Oswald, Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald, yeah. yes, that he was planning to kill the president that day. The the parts of the story that get interesting is how did he just happen to get a job at a place yeah. that had that beautiful vantage point, and how did he find that van? How did he know what the route was going to be? Mm. And there are some books out there. Um, there was one, and I can't remember the title of it, but uh, it was uh, by a former Secret Service agent, and not so much saying that it was the Secret Service that killed him, but that it was failures in the Secret Service procedures that made it easier for him to be assassinated. Got and it. and that's, you know, again, uh, <laughs> if I if I if I like a theory, I always like a theory that uh, simply writes it off to people being people because that's why there are erasers on the ends of pencils. We yeah. make mistakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't this thing you just mentioned about the the follow car with a with a a, a machine gun in it that accidentally went off. I find is fascinating, but it doesn't, it, one of the things from the JFK and granted, this is a movie that was done by Oliver Stone, but apparently there were quite a number of witnesses who saw something or someone up on that famous grassy knoll yep. behind the fence, flashes of light or yep. gunpowder or whatever. I, I I do admit I went and took a selfie on the grass <laughs> hole. <laughs> As to, you should. To to you know to support that gray man theory <laughs> of my career. But just to add to that point, I mean our NS friends listening will know all about military, the, the triangular crossfire. Yeah. I, I you know it's supposed to be the classic turkey shoot. Three guys catch the guy in the middle, triangular crossfire somebody's going to get them it does seem a very plausible argument don and, and yeah i do agree with that and i i have to admit when i was uh when i was a teenager and i was studying because i i come from an uh, a family that was primarily irish american 
So, um, so yes, Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. I was at Muddy Murphy's yesterday, and it was, <laughs> I, I was drawn there by the sound of the pipes that I heard from my hotel room window on the 15th floor. There you go. So the, yeah, but, cold, uh, cold beer had nothing to do with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but yeah, they, I mean, these, these theories, I mean, I, I think the, one of the bottom line things is the Warren Commission that initially, uh, you know, investigated this overlooked and or didn't do a good job investigating a thorough, let's say a thorough job investigating, uh, you know, the many different elements of this. And apparently the same with the Dallas Police Department. And I think, you know, is, again, is that from, accurate from what you no, yeah, Oh, know? yeah, I, I think I agree with you on that. I don't think there has been, you know, there may have been reams of paper, you know, generated about this, but I don't think anyone has actually done a good investigation of this because no one has the motivation to do a good investigation mm, of mm. this if you it and i'll i'll throw everyone under the bus for this it's not just that the <laughs> government wanted to cover up what happened um for perhaps selfish purposes one of the reasons i love that theory is that it explains why you didn't have a proper autopsy it explains why no one wanted to talk about this it explains why the re the, the the warren commission report leaves certain part certain avenues of investigation open and ha that have never been looked at it explains why no one's declassified so much of this mm. stuff because they just don't want to admit that that, that it was an error i'm listening yeah. just to recap <laughs> for those who weren't listening this is a, a secret service agent you believe had a bit of a tricky thing, trigger finger and accidentally Issue. shot him from behind. Yeah, and that's that's the 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 uh, the book was uh, called Mortal Error, and it focuses on that. the The theory comes from uh, the ballist, the Secret Service ballistics expert that worked on the uh, the reconstruction to find out mm. if it was possible for Lee Harvey Oswald to fire mm. that. You know, ancient rifle yeah. <laughs> three times well, in that yeah. space and that was it i mean everybody you know he had to fire if you look at the zabruder film you know the timeline of how many times he was shot he had to get off three shots in 5.7 seconds mm -hmm. and like even the best marksman can't do yeah. that and his last shot was the most accurate and be which accurate would never yeah. be the case right. apparently it would always be your first shot right. that would be the most accurate because you're, you're moving too much yeah. which, and, which, which again not to give too much credit to it because again um you know there are some questions about what that book's accuracy um, but it makes so much sense that I know as a as a trained federal agent, if I heard gunfire, my first reaction would be to arm up. And in this case, um, I, I won't get into some of the backstory about why I think the uh, <laughs> this this particular agent may not have been ready for duty at that point. But um, mm. let's just give him the benefit of the doubt that he wasn't still drunk from the night before. Right. And got his finger into the trigger guard of a rifle that he had not qualified on you wow. know an unfamiliar weapon system <laughs> um and you know let's just say the um you know, gun safety in the 1960s is probably a lot different than today yep. so the um and i and and i the reason i like this theory is because it does answer that question yeah could he have gotten three shots off in that time yeah could he have gotten three accurate shots off in 5.7 seconds maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know but um but he didn't have to if this is the truth and it also the i think the thing that's the most frustrating as an investigator is you always want to be that guy, right? You want you want the big case. Mm. You want that question. But then when you're thrown into a big case like this, and I saw this in that PPG case that I talked about earlier, um, there is a lot that you have to keep straight. Mm. You know, witness statements, um, yeah. records, um, you know, in this case, the timeline. Which they the, never seem to do through the JFK. Exactly. It's like such a shoddy investigation. Yeah. And yeah. it's the murder of your commander in chief. And it, you wouldn't let a rookie cop get away with some of these statements and evidence unless, lost. And... Unless you don't want anyone to realize that the president's life is so easily taken. Mm. Could be. And, you know, at the end, you know, sometimes sometimes no answer is a good security answer. Ask anyone who's ever been hacked. OK, mm. but the, <laughs> the thing that fascinates me with the JFK is there's so many possibilities, because even if you go with your theory or the lone gunman, 
Then you've got a mafia connected mm -hmm. nightclub owner who decides to kill the guy before he holds a trial because he wants to spare Jackie Kennedy a funeral. And everyone goes, that makes sense. <laughs> and, and, and no one questions this in a room with 60 dallas police officers he gets in with a gun and blows away the suspect of the president okay so so in a room with 60 officers gets in with a gun in the 1960s okay i can okay, i can allow enough. that to happen especially in texas fair enough, fair enough, where, fair enough. where the gun culture is has always been strong well, look we we got to go down but the last thing i'll just say is and this was this was brought up part in the jfk movie okay if you've got a conspiracy this massive how has no one yeah. come out over the years and and talked about it on the deathbed it, whatever you know spilled the beans if you will in a public way in the past 50 nearly 60 years 60 years i'll i'll, I'll you know use I mean? I'll, I'll use i'll use an example um you got another, about 15 seconds to do it yeah so when the <laughs> twa 800 flight went down over the atlantic mm. uh, just off the coast of new york yep. um there was a, a conspiracy theory that it had been shot down by an by by a navy ship right and the way i would always dissuade people from this is like listen so you mean to tell me that 300 sailors on a ship, most of which are like age 18, yeah. and no one's talked about it? There you go. Yeah. Got to go, Don. Thanks so much. Money <laughs> FM.